If this pulse gets 500 likes, <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. I'll buy the limo. He called. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. On this channel, I like to showcase the automotive culture and the positive impact it has on the community. And if you're a car enthusiast, you're like anything about cars, please be sure to hit that subscribe button for future videos. On today's video, I take you guys behind the wheel and we meet with Ryan Wheeler and Bud Zuber. They run the YouTube channel Lambo Fam. Very recently, they were able to acquire a very unique, weird, and rare vehicle, a Rolls Royce limousine. And what makes the car even more unique is that it is previously owned by a famous YouTuber. And on top of that, they were able to meet that famous YouTuber and purchase the vehicle from them. So to provide some context to the story, the, the vehicle was actually purchased from a big YouTuber by the name of Stradman and his roommate Burlacker. The story is that Stradman purchased the vehicle to gift to Burlacker both of them have huge YouTube channels and a huge following. Um, so it's very unique and, uh, and quite refreshing to see somebody from our local area to kind of take the risk to, uh, to meet somebody big and in betterment of pursuing their own dreams. So I feel that's enough context without giving away anything from the interview. So let's hop into the interview and then also do a walk around of the vehicle. So I'm Ryan Wheeler, uh, Lambo dad. I've got the YouTube channel Lambo fam. And uh, this is uh, this is Bud. <laughs> I'm Bud Zubert, uh, good friends with him. Kind of the guy that gets called when he's got an idea that's totally off the wall and he knows he needs somebody to go along with him. That's usually where I come in, like a purple Rolls Royce. So. Yeah, so there was a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes. Obviously, um, I've been watching Stradman stuff, Burlacker stuff, uh, and there's the, they've had this limo. And I've always talked about like, dude, we should buy the limo. And I like mentioned it to my wife, she's like, you're an absolute idiot. So I'm like, okay, we don't need the limo. And then as I got thinking about it more, I would put comments like in their thing where I'm like, it'd be kind of sweet if it caught their attention and I'm like, could buy the limo. And I didn't know what they wanted for it. They'd kind of make comments back and forth on their videos. And I got this idea that I'm, finally I, I kind of got in my mind where I'm like, okay, if I can get their attention, and something comes of it, I'll, I'll actually buy the limo. So I put a comment on, was it Burlacker's or Stradman's? It was Burlacker's page. And he, on his video. Yep, and it was, if this post gets- 500 likes. <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. I'll buy the limo. He calls me almost immediately after putting the post up. He's, it's got 100 likes. He's like, dude, I, I think I made a mistake. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I just put this post up. Go look at Burlacker's last YouTube video. So I'm like sitting at home and I'm flipping through it. I'm like, no, you didn't. Call him back. I'm like, is this, yeah, is this hard? Like, you you know, you got to do it now. Like, you're kind of putting it out there into the universe that this is something you're going to do. You're going to look bad if you bail. And he's like, I'm, I, I think we have to, man. Are you going to come with me? Are you down? I'm like, let's go. Yeah, and then Burlacker pinned it. He was the one that reposted the comment on his page. So when he reposted yeah. the comment on his page, he basically looked at it as, I'm gonna give these guys some hype, let's see what they come up with. After he, it kind of took off, he got in contact and was like, you guys aren't oh, serious, and, are you? You know, it was kind so of a- I had reached out before in email to Burlacker, trying to get information if it was even for sale, because I had posted a bunch of times. And, and this here, was two weeks of us going back and forth, like, like what are we? How are, are we, we gonna make here? this play work? Like how are we gonna? When are we gonna do it? How long? And how much money? Like how much money are we gonna invest in this? So I'm like, dude, this would be massive. Especially I knew if I got around them or we got out there, if they hung out with us for a little bit, we're like, we're just, every, they're just car people. I'm like, we'll be able. That to was the, the idea. You know, like we're gonna if we can just get in front of them, 
we're just gonna hang and it's gonna work out. Like yeah. that was kind of the. But then the thing was is that Strad wasn't gonna really have, cause I mean, he didn't, they've done all the videos, they've done all the pictures with it being white. So there's no there's no reason for them to have it a white. It, they've, they've had that a hundred times. Yeah. So then I hit up Clayton, who had just bought a Gallardo, who we had become good friends, who owns Summit Auto Wraps. And I'm like, dude, bro, can you wrap the limo? Amethyst, the whatever color. I'm like, so then in my head, I'm like, if I can get them, if we can get this thing wrapped, Strad and Burlack are gonna want that back at their place. And then we're gonna be able to get pictures with the Bugatti. I had messaged him about it, but they had been like catfished by like numerous people. They had been lied to, so they were gonna send it to auction. And it, he had fanboys trying to get it. <coughs> I mean, you know, people that were just looking to have the car because of whose it was. And so when he was going back and forth and we're like in the middle of all this discussion, I'm like, Ryan, you realize we can go out and get it, but how are, are we gonna drive it back? That was the original plan. I mean, so the original like thought was, and then Why? we talked to him some more and they were like, well, that's maybe not the best. Like, you know, you gotta go over mountain passes through Colorado, like this car. 1,500 miles. The brakes are a little, you know? And uh, so then he had to go out and buy a trailer just so that we could somehow yeah. get the car back to where it needed to be. And I think once we started telling them, okay, we're doing all this stuff, like it's, it got more real for them too. And they're like, well, if you guys are serious, like let's set a tentative. And it was a ways out. I mean, yeah, we, cause we had, Mexico. I had a vacation plan uh, and then Burlacker does accounting. So it was like end of the year stuff. And we were gonna try to like rush down there, get it. And I'm like, dude, we've got to be able to go with no agenda. Cause if we hit bad roads, Wyoming's terrible, which we found out. Uh, to drive through and we're pulling a freaking monstrosity of a trailer that's a wind like there was so many logistics behind it and then it was a 3,000 mile trip and I we averaged seven miles to the gallon so yeah so we had reached finally, out to him yeah after, and we finally scheduled it we went out and uh and then it took me three weeks four weeks I paid him one dollar bills and I had reached out to him and I'm like dude is this gonna as be it a got huge closer flight? I'm like would you be, like, I'm gonna pay in ones. If it's the end of the world, you guys are gonna actually be like mad. Like I can get a cashier's check, but then like, I'm not trying to have $30,000 wrapped up into, and then I couldn't, I didn't know what I was gonna do with these ones. And he's like, I've got some plans. And then he's and that like, was I'm gonna, more he's of like, a pain than we thought. Because every time we got to a hotel room, we're carrying in a duffel bag of ones. 42 because pounds. We didn't want to leave it in the trailer or in the car. Just a straight duffel bag full of cash. And it's a Rolls Royce duffel bag. So if anybody's going to jump us, they're going to go for the Rolls Royce duffel bag filled with cash. I mean, probably could have done looks... that a little different. And this whole time, we still haven't talked to Strat. Like, so we were hopeful to get a, you know, get the opportunity to hang out with him or at least have him be a part of it in some way. Like that was what we were excited about. I mean, yeah. Burlacker has got his, a huge page as well, but Strad was kind of like the, you know, if we could meet him and just get five minutes hanging out like that was going to be huge. And so we were talking about that that night in the hotel room and just hoping, let's just see where this goes. I mean, it could be, it, we could just do a car deal and leave. I mean, and that was the other thing that we were kind of thinking is like. And we were cool with, I mean, like that, that was, was fine. fine. The whole way. I mean, we had 1500 miles of talking about this. We're going to keep our expectations low for everything and hope for the best. And anything that comes above this is just gonna be a treat. And it was, I mean, a thousand yeah, times more than we could ask for. Yeah, so we get to, to Utah and we get into Utah, uh, so the night before yep. that we're gonna actually do the deal in the morning. And they're like, yeah, I was like, we're in Park City. We stayed in Park City. Um, and then uh, I was in contact with Burlacker and he's like, yeah, dude, we're gonna come. James wants to come. Is it cool if he brings uh, Oscar, his dog? And I'm like, dude, you guys, what do you mean? Is it cool? Of course, like anything. And so they roll up in his Raptor. Yep. And uh, get out and like, my wife is just freaking out. She's calling. She's like, I'm sweating. I'm crying. I don't know. Like, I'm so excited for you guys. I'm so nervous. I'm like, like we're just literally going to meet some. She's cool telling people. him not to be weird. Like, don't hug him. Like, don't don't be awkward. Yeah, and then like, I told her. So I told her cool. after we had first <laughs> met them. She's like, how'd it go? I was like, dude, I couldn't help myself. I picked him up and I hugged him. And she was like, I'm shutting my phone off and deleting Instagram. <laughs> like, she was done with it. Uh, but yeah, then we hung out and they're like, well, let's all roll over 
once we got to the shop the wrap to, shop to the wrap shop nobody's seen it yet so i've seen like one teaser picture of it purple and then dude strat hadn't seen it burlap nobody's seen it so all of us going there and then everybody was kind of and then you know the ones and that we threw all the we threw all the ones off of a balcony and and then we're cleaning the limo off with a leaf blower because there's like thousands of ones <laughs> all over it and dude it just so all everything just flowed so well and then yeah and then they're like well dude we got you know golden hour with the sun the you know the utah the views on views so they're like come over to the to the house so we loaded up 45 minute drive we jet across uh, and then, you know, he pulls out the Bugatti and then... And we're uh, geeking out the whole way over there. Like, we got invited to their house. Like, dude. They've got, like, Heavy dude, D's dude, giveaway. They invited us over. Like, like Heavy D's giveaway truck. The Diesel Brothers giveaway truck is at his house. All these people that you've seen on YouTube for, I mean, years are just yeah, stopping Stephen, by. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just... Uh, that Stefan who runs, does a bunch of the 8080 stuff. Um, like, he shows up with their giveaway car. The, that that Huracan with the Vorsteiner he like pulls up what are you guys doing he gets out he's filming like it was just like they do some yeah they have a pretty epic setup out there and it's like just really good people and then we went to dinner went to texas roadhouse yeah so we went to texas roadhouse did dinner and yeah it was it was nuts and now and we got been, back after texas roadhouse and we were just getting like unloading the car and like kind of burlacker drove us yeah burlacker we were drove in the us. back of the limo and burlacker <laughs> drove us to texas roadhouse in the limo and so we get back Sweet. and it's it's late and we're loading the car up and burlacker kind of pulls us aside and he's like you know guys i just want to let you know like me and james had talked about this and like if you two were kind of weird like this would have been a transaction he's like we would have been after going to the wrap shop like that was going to be it he's like but you guys are just kind of cool car guys so you know that's why this went as well as it did and that was kind of where we were at with the whole thing too like man, are we gonna get to like see the house are we gonna you know he got invited on the roof to do the yeah, kind so of the iconic we're up shots on there taking and, and it's like because he's like here dude come in the house i'm like uh i mean yeah but so yeah. we've kind of been thinking too if when we get done doing our content with it, we might just ship it back there and just have it dropped at their house and just- Just give it back. Yeah, it'll be kind of that ongoing thing where it's just gift, it just keeps giving. But I think we got a, we got a lot of time left with it. 1982 Rolls Royce Silver Spur 2. Two. Two. One of- 16. 16 made between 1980 and 84. 79, 83. Is that what it was? I have no okay. idea. Well, it's but not. it was for a year because they're in their hand built. So check this out. So there's a big difference between a factory Rolls Royce and a coach built Rolls Royce limousine. The coach built Rolls Royce limousines are people would buy the car, cut it, and then modify it. This was actually modified by the factory from from new as a limo. Uh, and then from the factory. So this is the coolest thing about the whole car besides the straight pipes and the wheels is right here it's got a silver plated uh rolls royce placard from the factory showing that it was a factory built rolls royce limo which burlacker almost drilled and kept because it was his favorite part of the limo yeah we found that out later on when we went to pick it up he's like man i wanted to keep that as like a plaque on my desk and yeah. we're like no 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 we gotta have it she's got some she's got some little flaws not many trunk doesn't really shut the doors are like soft touch doors or something. So you push them shut like gently. Uh, it does, you want to start up? Yeah, do it. All right, no, it, it better not make me look bad. It won't. part about it so it is a it is a 6.8 liter v8 as far as we know yep yeah but it's got a bunch of weird stuff because these these they well obviously they still make like um airplane motors and stuff but uh back in this era they quit making airplane stuff and they started making cars because their airplanes kept crashing <laughs> so at least with a car you don't if it stops running it just stops on the road it doesn't crash uh, but if you look at, I uh, popped the hood for you. Everything in this thing, like 
even down to like the fluids it takes. And are... redundant systems. So there's like two power steerings. There's, you know, there's. And it takes mineral oil, not brake fluid. So you gotta find that, order that. I mean, it's got the, it's just got the weirdest thing. So when it, when we blow it up, if we blow it up, it'll get an LS motor. Oh, all right, so the wheels, this is the craziest thing uh, that we did to this. So there's no, this bolt pattern is the, <laughs> there's only like four vehicles ever made that have this bolt pattern. It's a, uh, it's five by 155 and a half. So there was some Bentleys in these. The biggest wheels you could get with this bolt pattern are 16s and they are 1982 wheels. So they're not cool. So First yeah. of all, you had to order them blank and then we had to have them drilled in a Toyota Tundra bolt pattern. So they had to be, truck hubs or the truck yeah, plate so size behind here the problem that we were having the bolt pattern wasn't as big of an issue but the hub is huge it's got like a four inch hub so we ended back. up having to get the rims ordered as a toyota tundra bolt pattern and then kind of machine those to work Ruby. then we had to have the bore on the back on the hub opened up to get the right fitment on them and so once we bought the rims we had to send them to a machine shop to have Three all this amigos. done so this because is all out in LA. Yeah, the the factory the the factory wouldn't do any more adjustments to the original spec. That's why they had to go to the machine shop because they had never tested anything in this size and so they couldn't guarantee safety and all this other stuff. So they're like, "Listen, you want to go crazy and do all this goofy drilling and, you know, you're going to have to do it somewhere else." We had to grind some stuff down when they came um, on like the actual hubs themselves, but they fit and they are freaking sweet. <laughs> Friends are showing up. <laughs> All right, so back here where the magic happens, none of the lights worked. Everything was kind of like you hit bumps and it would come on. Um, but, uh oh, let me, you gotta sit in the chair. You gotta sit in there. Dude, it's, it is comfortable. Smells weird. The trunk I would show you, but it doesn't shut. Don't do it, don't do it. No, I think it's, I think it's good though. Uh, it never opens and when it does, it doesn't close. So there you have it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It's always nice and refreshing to see somebody local pursuing their dreams and making it kind of on a big scale. I wish the very best for the Lambo fam um, and their YouTube channel as him just buying the, the limo has brought him a lot more traffic to his uh, YouTube and, and kind of uh, making his channel take off. So I wish you the very best Ryan and Bud. And with that being said, I appreciate you guys for tuning in and we'll check you guys on the next video. Peace.